Just lift your hands in this place. Sometimes we just have to magnify the Lord. Father, we magnify your name this morning. We declare your name is awesome. We declare you as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We declare you as El Elyon, the most high God. We declare you as Daddy Adonai. We thank you that you are our provider. We thank you in advance that you are our healer. We thank you in advance that you are our deliverer. We thank you in advance for your abundance. Jesus, you said that you've come that we might have life and that more abundantly. And so we just lift our hands as high as we can to receive of your abundance for we know that we are seated with you at the right hand of your father surrounded by all spiritual blessings surrounded by your goodness surrounded by your mercy that follows us all the days of our lives and we are just thankful today for your word says enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into Lord, his courts with praise. Lord, praise you, Lord, and so we praise you in spirit and in truth this morning. We praise you because you're good. We praise you because you're merciful. We praise you because you're kind. We praise you because you're amazing. We praise you because you're a miracle worker. We praise you because you're all that. We praise you because of your power. We praise you because you're sovereign. We praise you because you're everywhere. We praise you because you're in everything. We praise you for our health. We praise you for our families. We praise you for our children. We praise you for our grandchildren. We praise you for the clothes on our backs. We praise you for the food on our table. We praise you for our education. We praise you for the sanctuary. We praise you for your peace. We praise you for your joy. We praise you. Because you just are who you are. And so we thank you, Father, in this hour that you're filling this sanctuary with your glory. We're filling this sanctuary with your light. And we just breathe you in. We just breathe in the goodness of your spirit. We just swim in the anointing of your name in this place. Your name is Jesus. It's the name above every name. We praise you because you're just far above all power and all principalities and all dominions. And every spiritual force of wickedness in high places, you're above that too. We praise you because your name is above cancer. We praise you because your name is above a stroke. We praise you because your name is above sickness and disease. We praise you because your name is above politics. Your name is above every treaty. We praise you because your name is above every war and rumors of war. We just praise you because you woke us up this morning. The old folks used to say and started us on our way. And so for that we praise you just because you're good. Just because you're merciful and kind. Look at your neighbor and say, you should just praise him for that. 
And so, Father, we continue to prepare our hearts this morning. We continue to prepare our hearts this morning. We're expecting you to show up and show out in this place. We lay it all down for you, Father. If you agree with that, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bless Amen. Your name, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised, God. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So All 
As we're ministering to the Lord and just being apprehended about the worship and I just heard the father unlock even more understanding about this year of his manifest glory part of the definition of worship means that we have a posture of submission to God thus acknowledging his sovereignty a posture of submission to God 
thus acknowledging his sovereignty. And he says in John 4, 23, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. And I just have to bring you all into a closer glimpse of what worship does. And so earlier I had a part, we prophesy in part. And I said, our thanks has an assignment. If our thanks has an assignment, how much more does our worship do? How much? Because the name of Jesus speaks a far better word. So the Lord gave me to really just say that worship, merkandrabase, has an assignment. What happens when we worship? When the worshipers arise, there makes room for God to do all that he has already before ordained. When worship arise, when worshipers show up on the scene, you can be facing a life-threatening situation. God doesn't care how long you were lying there, unresponsive, but he says, a worshiper is here. I didn't know why I had to make my way to Rochester, New York to get to my sister, but now I know a worshiper is here. So when the doctors are curious as to, is this going to be fatal? It cannot be because a worshiper, I'm not surrendering to the diagnosis of what the medical plan says. Again, I had to tell a family member, I don't care what gaps I don't know about what happened. I simply am here to bring the mandate of the kingdom. And if you're not with that plan, you've got to understand the place of worship. Again, it is a posture of surrendering. We have to abandon everything else. And in exchange, that's saying, God, I'm acknowledging your sovereignty. And that means I'm not trying to manipulate and tie your hand for the outcome. But all I know is that you are faithful. And all I know is we are the planting of the Lord. And all I know is that we shall show forth your glory. So where are the worshipers? Who is saying, I surrender, God? My posture is a perpetual surrender to you. When we talk about the, the manifest glory, his manifest glory, that's it. Our worship makes availability for the full display of the glory of God. True worshipers arise. Worship responds. Worship gives a response from the kingdom mandate that shows we are simply his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Our worship, worshipers, our worship has an assignment. God is leading us to places of influence to be able to show up on the scene so the assignment of the kingdom can come forth. We're going to be in some tight places, but just know the expanse of the kingdom, the express glory of his image, the brightness of his person. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. If you can't worship because of that, worship a posture of surrender, thus acknowledging the sovereignty of God. Your worship has an assignment. And I was thinking, prophet, as I was, couldn't remember what day it was. Didn't exactly know what was going on and where I was. And I looked in the mirror, y'all, and I said, you know what? I do look like what I've been through because I look like I've been kept by the grace of God. Hey! And I want to tell us here at the Kingdom Advancement Center, I want to tell us something. Because when I walked into that hospital room, a member of my sister's church was there. And she just broke down and I said, mm -mm, I began to pray. I said, no, 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 no. No, 
Men are to always pray. Now, if I'm her sister and I can walk in and I can see the reality of the situation but know the truth of God, hey! you're going to have to take this outside of here. Worshippers, worshippers. There was a collaboration with healthcare professionals that I've never seen. They began to ask, do you want us to play some gospel music? Who's the artist? What do we do? The doctor was just like, I'm so glad you're here. I said, and I am glad you are here too. I said, and I want to tell you what we're believing. I wrote on her board. They said, what do you expect for today? What's the plan for today? I said, the plan is I'm expecting a miracle. And I wrote it. Worship means you will write out what the spirit of the Lord is going to do. Because again, it's an announcement of what God is going to do. So, so please, I really want us to know. God is mantling us in this hour to literally go and shape the universe in such a way that God's fingerprint is everywhere that we are. Everywhere that we are. The true worshipers. The true worshipers. And we are built up because we're forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together. We're running into the sanctuary. We're coming to be refueled so that we can give Jesus what he paid for. So that we can show up and know that there are answers upon answers upon answers. So what situation is God going to allow you to rush into so there can be a worshiper? One who is saying, my posture is a perpetual surrender to God. And it is acknowledging his sovereignty. So I just want to leave you with that. Your worship has an assignment. Amen. Amen. You can be seated where you are. If you have your Bibles, go over to Job chapter 22. If you have your Bibles, go to Job 22. I know I'm going in a new direction. Good morning. Job chapter 22. We're going to get ready for our tithe and giving period. Job 20. Job 22. When you have it, say amen. Job 22, verse 26 says, For then thou shalt have thy delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up thy face unto God. Then, th then shalt thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy what? Thou shalt also decree a, a thing, and it shall be what? And the light shall shine upon your what? And so as we prepare our, our seed this morning, I also want you to, de to decree a thing. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand right where you are, and our finance team will, will help you. It's important as we prepare our vows before the Lord. The Bible said that we are to honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruit of all our, our increase, so shall our barns be filled with, with plenty, and so shall our vats over, overflow. And so we're continuing to believe. Prophet, if you can help me figure out what our tithe is. Your pastor has a tithe too.
When you're ready, just stand where you are. When I come into the house of the Lord, I want to be spiritually ready. I'm ready for his kingdom to come. I'm well ready for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm believing that the Father's desire is to be a blessing to, to my family, to my children and my children's children. I'm believing that God's desire is to be a blessing to your family. I'm believing that he loves you just as much as he loves me and that his desire is to release a multi-generational blessing upon our families, that he'll make us rich. Are you decreeing a thing? That he'll make us rich and add no sorrow with it, that our gifts will make room for us. Come on, you got to decree it with me. That our gifts will make room for us and bring us before great men and, and women. I'm decreeing that we're above only and and not beneath. Come on, you got to decree that thing with me. We got to be in agreement. I'm, I'm decreeing that we are the head and, and not the tail. I'm decreeing that the Lord will open up, as he promised, his good treasures, the heavens, and pour us out such a blessing we have not room enough to, to receive it. I'm believing by the blood of Jesus, according to the covenant of, of Abraham, that in blessing God is going to to bless me and in multiplying he's going to multiply me more than the stars of heaven more than the sand on the seashore I'm, I'm believing that he's going to multiply you more than the stars of heaven more than the sands of the of the seashore I'm believing that God gives us power to get wealth and that as we've been prophesying by his, his prophets we've been prophesying that God is going to bring us into new spheres of influence not for our glory, but for his name's sake and for the glory of the Father. His is the kingdom and the power and the glory for forever. And so I'm believing that, that by the seed that we're sowing, that his kingdom is going to come and that his will is going to be done through our seed on earth as it is in heaven. And I'm agreeing according to the book of Job that we're going to, as we decree all of these things according to the word of God, that we shall be Establish. You agree with that? All right, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for these seeds. We thank you that you give seed to the sower and bread for food and that you're enlarging the harvest of our, of our righteousness. We're believing this morning that you're going to, according to your word, bless some 30, some 60, and some 100-fold. If you agree with that, say in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God for our giving, and may we all stand for our apostolic decree, please. Exceeding great joy, great joy. All right, KAC, what do we believe? We, the body of believers at the Kingdom Advancement Center, believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that he died and rose on the third day, that the Holy Bible is the word of God, and the Holy Spirit lives within us and was sent by Christ as our counselor from life. As believers, we declare from God's word, the Lord is our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer, our God, our strength, and whom we will trust our buckler and the horn of our salvation and our high tower. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. The Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory 
No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. The angel of the Lord encamps round about us and delivers us. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. He brings us forth also into a large place. He delivers us because he delights in us. The Lord shall bear us witness with signs, wonders, diverse miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. We will get wisdom as the principal thing. Though it costs all we have, we will get understanding and be blessed. We shall receive a reward, and our expectation shall not be cut off in Jesus' name. And at this time, amen, you may be seated. If you are a first-time visitor, we'd like for you to simply just kind of raise your hand and our um, greeters will get something in your hand that you can place in the giving baskets at that time. And what we're all going to do together is we're going to sing our welcome unto the KAC body. Amen? All right. All right, stand up and greet your neighbor. Hug somebody you ain't seen in a week. Welcome to the K. Where you can walk in victory Receive a rainbow word Believe in what you've heard To live a life abundantly We teach the word and prophesy Perfecting saves for kingdom life we walk by faith and cast down fear. We are so happy that you're here. Welcome to the KAC, where you can walk in victory. We're so glad that you came. Be blessed in Jesus' name from the KAC, our kingdom family. Because we are so glad that you're here. We are so glad that you're here. Children, you are dismissed to Children's Church, all children ages 18 months to 12. You, you can see your teachers in the vestibule. If you can head out to the vestibule, you'll be able to get your teachers and assemble in your rooms. Praise God for our children. Give it up for our children and our children's ministry teachers. Amen. Prepare our hearts to receive the word this morning. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. Father, I thank you for the Holy Ghost this morning. I thank you for advance, in advance for what you're getting ready to do in our midst. I thank you that you've invited us here to partake of your goodness. I thank you that every need is met in Christ Jesus our Lord.
Just lift your hands a little bit as we're preparing for the word of the Lord. Mm. I thank you in advance that new financial needs are met this morning. Father, I thank you for every creative financial miracle in advance. I hear the word promotions. If that's you, just wave your hand. I thank you in advance for promotions in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, in advance. Thank you, Lord God, for elevations. I thank you in advance. I see that in the spirit. God is releasing new resources into the hands of his children, into the hands of his faithful. I thank you for new opportunities. I thank you that we're well favored in this house. Just touch your own belly. Just say that. Say, I am blessed. I am well favored. Say that again. Say, I am blessed. I am healed. I am well favored. In Jesus' name. If you have your Bible, just get it prepared in advance. Go over to Exodus chapter 33. I want to teach and, and decree over your life and preach just for a little bit on the subject, releasing his manifest glory. Releasing his manifest glory. Exodus 33. This is the, the year of his manifest glory. As we declare that in the beginning of the year, we have an expectation by, by faith that God is going to, to tangibly and materially fill this sanctuary, that he's going to tangibly and materially saturate us and, and baptize us in his, in his presence. This is the year of, of stewardship. This is the decade of, of generational wealth. And so we've been believing in, in debt eradication. We believe the Bible says, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And so we're believing this year, you can lift one of your hands if you want to. We're believing in this year that God is, is making us free in our relationships. He's, we're believing that God is making us free in our, in our finances. We're believing that God is making us free in our careers. We're believing that Jesus is releasing us from, from bondage. Jesus said he came to set the captives, to set the captives free. And so if we're serving the Messiah, if we're serving the King of Kings and the, and the Lord of Lords, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is, there is liberty then we're believing by faith and by the faith of Jesus Christ himself that we're a free people, that God does not desire for us to be in bondage in any way, that God does not desire for us to be bound in, in any way, but we have a right as, as the sons of God. John chapter 1, verse 12, as many as believed in him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, as many as believed on his name. And so I don't know about you, but I, I've made a decision to be free in this season. I've made a decision to be released and set free from every chain. The Bible says be free from every sin that so easily in, entangles us. And I just want to feel good before Jesus. Is that all right? And so I challenge you to get to a place of complete deliverance. I challenge each of you to get to a place of complete healing not just in your body, but in your bank account. Not just in your bank account, but in your marriage. Not just in your marriage, but in all your relationships. When your relationships with your children, I declare that you will be free. In your relationship with your parents, I declare you're going to be free. In your relationship with your boss on your job, I declare you're gonna, that's going to be a hard one, but a miracle is necessary. 
you're still going to be free. Whom the Son sets free is free in, indeed. And we're believing in this season what his manifest glory is about is that we're not continuously striving for it. It's here. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is, is here. And so this is not just a year to prophesy about it. And this is not just a year to slobber at the mouth about it. This is not just a year to roll on the ground about it. We did that last year. This is the year of freedom in which we're stepping into the manifest glory, in which we're stepping into the hope of glory, and we're believing that we're living in it. The prophet said, I, I have fainted unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the, the living. And so we're, say now, now, we're believing that we're seeing it and we're walking in it in the, in the now. Amen. The year of his manifest glory is about signs, wonders, and miracles. It's about the fact that God, if we desire it by faith, if, we, if we're going to step into it with all our hearts, it's about understanding that healing is available now. What you see on the, the x-ray and what you see on the, the CAT scan and what you see on the MRI, we can do something about that now. We have the power on the inside of us. Jesus said that the kingdom of God is within you. And so I'm not looking for the kingdom. I'm living in the kingdom now. I'm not searching for the kingdom. The Bible said that the kingdom of God comes without observation. So I don't need to look for it. It's already on the inside of me. And we're believing that there's a special manifestation in this year of the sanctuary, in this the year of the secret place. We're believing when we gather, something special is going to happen. Bible said, these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. Y'all in Exodus chapter 33? That was three of you. Exodus chapter 33. If y'all have it, say amen. Exodus chapter 33. Just stand for a moment. I'm going to read a little bit of it. Look at your neighbor and say, read the Bible. <laughs> Exodus 33. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to skip through some of it. I command your ADD and ADHD to calm down in Jesus' name. Is that all right? Exodus chapter 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it, and I will send an angel before thee. You come on, you got to step into this thing. You have to step into the, the mindset of God. You must step into the supernatural mindset of the Father. Verse 2, And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite the Amorite, the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go up in the midst of the people, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the, in the way. And when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned, they cried, and no man did put on him his ornaments. For the Lord had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people, and I will come up unto the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the, the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. 
And it came to pass when Moses went out into the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone unto the tabernacle. Go to verse 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou said unto me, Bring up this people, and hast not let me know who you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my, my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now thy way, that I may, that I may know you, that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is thy what? In other words, Moses is saying, don't play with me, Jesus. If you're going to be with me, then be with me. If not, then don't be with me then. Verse 14, and he said, my presence shall go what? And I will give you what? And he said unto him, if your presence don't go with me, carry us not up what? In other words, Jesus, if your presence is not going to be with me, don't fool with me now. If you're going to go with me, then go with me, but don't send me by my what? Verse 16, for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in your sight? Is it not that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, okay, I will do this thing also that you have spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know you by, by name. And Moses said, hmm. Verse 18, if that's true, then show me your, your glory. And he said, okay, listen, I will make all my goodness pass be before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be, be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. He said, but check it out, though, you cannot see my my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And he said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a, a rock. This is how it's going to happen. It shall come to pass while my glory, say glory, glory, while my glory pass by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts. You shall see my behind. That's what it says. But my face, you shall not what? You may be seated where you are. While you're being seated, go to Exodus chapter 40. Can I show you more than one scripture? You know I am anyway. Exodus chapter, chapter 40. Verse 30, verse 34. When you get there, look at your neighbor and say, it's all about the glory. The glory. Exodus 40, 34. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the, the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud or the glory cloud abode thereon. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle or the glory of the Lord filled the, the temple. Can we deal with that word? Let's deal with the Lord, the word glory. The word glory is the Hebrew word kavod. Say kavod. What it means is the sum total of one's riches, honor, wealth, abundance, and, and splendor. Moses said, Lord, show me your, your glory. What Moses was saying is show me the, the sum total, show me the magnitude of all of your riches, all of your honor, your wealth, abundance, and show me your, your splendor. If you say you know me 
by name and you will be with me, then show me who you really, really are. The kavod is the magnitude and size of one's wealth or estate. And for example, people would come from, from far and wide to see the glory of King Solomon and to, to see his splendor. The queen of the, the south, Queen Candace, came to see the glory of Solomon's majesty and and splendor. The kavod is the fullness. Say fullness. The kavod is the fullness of one's power or authority for the purpose of ruling or reigning. The kavod is the fullness. It is the true or secret source of one's power. And so, for example, how many of you know the story of Samson and Delilah? And the source of his power was in his was in his hair. And so what, what Moses was saying was audacious. What he was really saying is, Lord, if you say that you know me and you know all about me and you know me by name, then I would like to know all about, all about you. And so show me the true source or the true secret of your power. That's what he was saying. And so what God was saying is, okay, listen, if I show you the true source of my power, you're going to die. That's what's going to happen. And so what I'm going to do is just let my behind, let my booty pass before you. That's what he said. I'm just clarifying what the father said. That's what he said. He said, I'm not going to show you my face. My face is, my face is too cute. For you to behold. No, it, that's in the King James. Henderson translation, I'm going to let my booty pass before you. Y'all always want your pastor to be real. Y'all be lying. Go to Acts chapter 2. Let's look at it in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the glory filled the, the temple. The Old Covenant, the glory filled the, the tabernacle. You in Acts chapter 2? This is how it looks in the, in the New Covenant. Acts chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost was, was fully come, they were all with one accord. Where were they? in one place. When that was fulfilled, the Bible says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty, mighty wind, and it filled all the, the house where they were what? Look at your neighbor and say, it's in the, in the house. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire and it set upon each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them them utterance. Write this down. This is the first thing. This is for you, Uncle Charles. Our job, our spiritual assignment as kingly priests, our job as sons of God, our job as those who have been given dominion over the works of his hands and over our, all the earth, our job, our assignment when the church gathers, like we're gathered here this, this morning, is to have an unwavering expectation that our God is tangibly present. That should be our expectation. When we gather here, our job is to enter into his gates with the expectation that the tangible Shekinah glory, because our God is the king of, of kings, because our God is the, the Lord of lords, because our God is Jehovah Jireh, our provider, because our God is Jehovah Shalom, the God of our, our peace, because our God is El Elyon, the most high high God, because our God omnipotent reigneth, because we serve the mighty God. 
Because that's who we serve and we are his children, our job is to enter into his presence as we gather together with an unwavering, say unwavering, unwavering. with an unwavering expectation that God is going to fill our worship, the Holy One of, of Israel, without restraint, without limitation, and without boundaries. And I have an, an expectation that as we connect with the the father that he's going to show out and that he's going to show up in a tangible way to meet our to meet our needs go to psalm 27 psalm 27 says it like this it says the lord is my light and my sal salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the the strength of my life of whom shall i be Afraid. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and, and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be, be confident. I'm in verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me shall hide me in his in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle look at your neighbor and say it's in the tabernacle in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me up upon a Upon a rock, and now shall mine head be lifted up above my enemies round uh, about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of, of joy. I will sing, yeah, I will sing praises unto the, unto the Lord. Just stand where you are. Let's deal with number one. Let's deal with number one. How y'all doing, visitors? There are things that God will not do in our lives outside of the established habit of assembling together outside of the established habit of gathering in his sanctuary. His sanctuary, unbeknownst to Ty Tribbett, is the physical place called the house of the, the Lord where God has a sign for us to gather, say gather, gather. to gather regularly. Amen. Though you pray in your secret place, Though you are the church all by yourself, though God knows you when you're at bedside Baptist, though all of that is, is true, though you're the apple of his eye and, and you, are, you are special unto him and, and you heard your, your pastor say that you are not an orphan and that God knows you and accepts you just how you, how you are. Though that is true, there are still things that God will not do in our lives outside of us being corporately gathered so that he can reveal himself to us collectively. Look at your neighbors. Just slap your neighbor one time and wake him up and say, it's not all about you. Thank you. There are healings that are not available while you're praying to God at lunchtime in your car. There are, there, are, there are deliverances that are not available, though your voice is melodic in the shower before you go to bed at night, and though God receives it as the, the melody of an, an angel, there are deliverances that are not available to you while you are by yourself. There are things that God will not reveal unless it is revealed in the midst of the multi-member, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, born again body of, of believers. Can we deal with number two? 
It is not religious for the saints to gather regularly at, at church. That's where we've gotten to now, the underground church, where church is on, online. But how many of you know you can't get no hug online? How many of you know nobody can give you $20 and meet your need online? How many of you know nobody can help watch your kids and help educate your children online? Look at your neighbor and say, church is about community. Don't look, slap your other neighbor. Tell them to wake up. Tell them church is, church is not about entertainment. I know my son wants to slap me so bad. Let's look at number three. You can sit down while you see this one. God has ordained the physical church to be a restoration oasis for us to experience his, his goodness. And so the sanctuary, when we come to this room, is the place where healing is available. His sanctuary, when we come to this, to this house, is the place where deliverance is available. His sanctuary, where we can worship together, where we can lift our collective voices in worship, is the place where God inhabits the praises of, of Israel. It's the place where we do not limit the Holy One of, of Israel. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and, and 24 declares this. Hebrews chapter 10 and, and 24 says, there is a need for us to consider one of another. Tell your other neighbor, it's not only about you. Let us consider one of another to provoke unto love and to good what? Works. How do we do that? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one uh, another, and much more as you see what? The day approaching. Now, here is what I want you to get, and I'm almost through. Go back to Exodus. Go to Exodus verse 29. And if I can just get you to get this principle. If you leave church today with just this this principle, I want you to get this. Exodus chapter 29, go to verse 42. For this is the year of the, of the sanctuary. Exodus 29, 42 says, this shall be a continual, say continual. That means without end. This shall be a continual burnt burn offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the, before the Lord. Say it's at the door. He said, look, this shall be a continual burnt offering. And of course, we know in the, the New Testament, Jesus is our ultimate offering. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 tells us, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God to present your body as a living sacrifice or as a living burnt offering, holy, acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable what? Service. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be this. the mindset that we have as we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. Because after the Bible, this is in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, when it said, present your body as a living what? sacrifice holy acceptable unto God this is your reasonable service right after that it said but get your mind right though in verse 2 be ye not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind because what it's saying is that your offering as you enter into the house of God must be given with the proper mindset because your attitude as we enter into the presence of the Father is the key that unlocks the miracle you've been seeking for. Your attitude as we enter into worship before the, 
the king is the solution to, the, to getting the need met that you're seeking after. And so the Bible says, listen, there shall be a continual burnt offering. Say continual. And it's going to happen throughout your what? Generations. But it's at the door of the what? Of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Watch what, watch what the Lord says. This is capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, God. He said, but I want you to understand, once you understand where the blessing is, that is at the, the door, then he says, where I will do what? I will meet you to speak there unto, unto you. Look at verse 43. And there I will meet with the children of, of Israel. And if we get it at the door, watch what it says. And the tabernacle then shall be sanctified by my what? Glory. And so what the word of God is teaching us is that whether or not there's healing in the sanctuary, whether or not there's deliverance in the sanctuary is dependent upon our attitude, say, is at the door. That's a good teaching. I could just stop with that. And so because the word of God knows this, can I give you some notes? Write this down. God desires to make his tangible presence God desires to make his glory available to his, to his people. His glory, which is in the sanctuary, ensures that every solution and miracle, which is his kingdom, is within the reach of his what? People. Can I say it one more time? God desires to make his tangible presence, his Shekinah his Shekinah glory available to his people. His glory ensures, it's, it's an insurance policy that, that guarantees that solutions, that miracles, that healings, that deliverances, his kingdom, are within the reach of his, of his children. Go to Psalm 100. And so because the Father it wants us to get it, I told you I'm almost done. Be because the truth is God wants your credit score to increase. He cares about that. The truth is God cares about your trauma, and so he came to heal the broken, brokenhearted. The truth is God, God does care about your, your relationships. He came to set the captive captive free and because of that we he's given us an instruction on how to get into his his presence you in psalm 100 psalm 100 said do it like this make a joyful noise unto the unto the lord all you what all you land serve the lord with with gladness come before his i was talking to my my wife this week and i said babe you know what I, i'm beginning to feel like that i'm complaining more than I'm giving thanks. So, babe, I'm, I'm beginning to feel like that I'm dwelling on what is not happening more than I'm dwelling on the fact that we have a nice house. More than I'm dwelling on the fact that our children are doing what we've asked them to, to do. More than I'm dwelling on the fact that I have good food to eat at my disposal. I'm beginning to feel like I'm complaining about my job more than I'm giving thanks that I have one. I'm beginning to feel like I'm complaining about where my finances are not more than I'm giving thanks for the fact that I do have something to, to give. And so at that moment, I heard the Lord say, what you need to do is enter into my, my gates with thanksgiving. Why don't you start with that? I said, baby, I'm beginning to feel like that I'm starting all my prayers asking God for something instead of doing what Jesus said. He said, when you pray, you should first say, our Father, which art in, in heaven, hallowed be your, your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm beginning to feel like I'm disrespecting Jesus. And that might be why I don't have everything that I'm trying to, to receive because we are not starting off with what? Thanksgiving. Can I read it again? 
Y'all stand while I read it this time. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with what? Amen. Know ye that the Lord, he is what? God, it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of in the gathering. Mark 16, 17 says it like this. It says, these signs shall follow them. Say them. Come on, look at your neighbor and one more time and say, it's not only about you. It says, these signs, if you need prayer, just meet me right up here. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new, new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they eat any, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall do what? Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your Shekinah glory. Father, we ask that you fill your temple in this hour. We're believing there's breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I believe with no doubt there's healing. Come for prayer this morning. I thank you that we have all our needs met in you. Every need is supplied through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray in the spirit, saints. I thank you that there's nothing missing. Nothing broken in you. I thank you for new anointings upon your people. I thank you for new manifestations of your power. I thank you for the burden removing, yoke destroying power. Amen. I thank you for scholarships. I thank you for new academic opportunities. first Jesus we worship you with all of our hearts with all of our hearts we worship you come on your healing is in your praise we sing we sing a new song we worship you with all of our hearts with all of our hearts we you're looking for is in his Shekinah glory. We sing a new what you're looking for is in his presence. We worship you with all our Father our is, is gracious. We worship you. Our Father is kind. We 
Brothers, where are you at? This thing came upon me when we first came into the sanctuary. Brothers, if you need a, a promotion, if you've been praying about that, brothers, if you've been praying for opportunities, you've been praying about that, but you've just felt stuck, you just felt like you cannot get to it. You've been striving, but it's elusive. If that's you, brothers, just meet me right up here. I want to pray for men really quickly. Sing a new song. We worship you. All the hearts we With all, all of our hearts. We worship Brothers, just come all right here really quick. We see. If you haven't been praying about that, that's okay. We worship you. Thank you for these men. Men, if you can just, if you can just touch one another. Father, I thank you for these men. I declare every blockade. I declare every delay. I declare every obstruction. I declare every obstacle. I declare every place where there's impaired vision. I declare every place where there's discouragement. I declare every place where there's condemnation. I declare every word curse spoken over their lives. I declare every generational curse, the sins of our fathers, the sins of our father's father. I declare every transgression. I declare every place of guilt. I declare every place of shame. I declare that broken. I declare it broken by the blood of Jesus. I declare every ungodly cycle that would try to cling to this these men of God. I declare every ungodly cycle broken from the tops of their head to the soles of their 
to the soles of their feet. I declare every demonic stronghold. I declare every cycle and every spirit of calamity. I declare that spirit of calamity to be broken in Jesus' name. There it is. I declare that spirit of disaster. No matter how many seeds you sow, there'll be disaster. I declare the, the spirit of disaster to be broken in Jesus' name. I declare the spirit of trauma to be broken in Jesus' name. I declare every attack on the mind. I declare every attack on your job to be broken in Jesus' name. And I declare new opportunities. I declare new pathways will be released. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. I declare over your life, he shall direct your pathway in Jesus' name. I declare your pathways unobstructed in Jesus' name. That you will have an unobstructed view in Jesus' name, that the Lord will cause the work of your hands to, to prosper, that the Lord will cause the work of your hands to, to multiply, that the Lord will cause the work of your hands to be recognized and acknowledged. I declare on the work of your hands a spirit of acknowledgement. I declare on your, the work of your hands a spirit of recognition and reward in Jesus' name. And I declare over every one of your lives that there shall not just be a reward, but there shall be a re-reward in Jesus' name. And I declare that this anointing shall expand into the congregation. I declare that this anointing shall span into every household and that there shall be a breaker's anointing on every household by which there shall be nothing missing and nothing broken. Come on, declare it. Come on, say, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here this morning with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here this morning, you never accepted Jesus Christ. He's the King of glory. You never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And you desire to accept him for the very first time this morning. If that's you, just raise your hand right where you are. Amen. We love to pray for you. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. so excited you raised your hand. <laughs> You've been waiting for a long time. <laughs> Amen. Just bow your heads in here. Just repeat after me. We're all going to repeat. Amen. 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 Just every head bowed, every eye closed. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I surrender all to you. Father, I thank you for accepting me, for dying for me, and re rising again on the third day. I thank you that you've made my sins as far as the east is from the west, and remember them no more. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead on the third day that I might be saved. Father, I thank you for coming into my life, allowing me to be born again and be filled with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. 
Come on, shout amen. Come on, you should have given God a shout. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen today and what our ears have heard concerning the word of life. We thank you that you have not abandoned us. We thank you that you have not forsaken us. We thank you that you've shown your glory in this place. And you're continuing to supply all our needs according to the riches of your glory, which are in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you agree with that, say in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in here. Oh, it, praise God. The mic is on. Amen. All right, family. Praise God for that word, that powerful word this morning. All right, so I am going to give our KAC announcements for the day. Amen. Are we excited? that things are going on in the body, hallelujah. And we have quite an extensive lineup, amen? All right, so first off, we have our KAC Marriage Ministry game night that is taking place on Friday, March the 29th. It is at 6.30 p.m., and it will be at our pastor's home, the Henderson's res uh, residence, amen? All right, so for all of our married couples, please make sure that you are SVP by reaching out to Brother Charles in the back, amen, or Prophet April, so that we can get a good head count because what's important for those of you that have littles, there will be child care provided, all right? So that makes a difference. So please make sure you give them a call to let them know that you are planning to attend so that arrangements can be made for your little people. Amen? All right, we are excited about that. And then, because the married men will be occupied on the same evening, the King's Men's Ministry will be joining Adonijah for an exciting night at Top Golf. Yay! So since what's the word does occur on the, fir or the fourth Friday of every month, and the married men will be occupied. Adonijah was so gracious to say, let's go get together and hang out at Top Golf." So please make sure that you see Adonijah for all the specifics, any details. He will get you all set up with everything you need. Amen? Amen. Yes. <laughs> all right. And so due to an overwhelming demand that we were chomping at the bit, we were pulling at the coattails of our apostle, to make sure that we got this wonderful 2024 household budgeting workshop. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so excited. So please come make sure that you are making yourself available. It will be on every Saturday in the month of April. So that is the 6th, the 13th, the 20th, and the 27th from 9 a.m. until 11 a.m., and it will be here at the KAC upstairs in room 205. So please, make sure you bring your heart, uh, your mind, have it open, um, your check stubs, your I mean, all your paperwork, have it all ready, your bills, and a, a no condemnation spirit, okay? No matter how old you are or how old you want to be, just come on in, <laughs> come on in, and just let your knowledge be expanded on your financial household budget, amen? All right, so again, that's gonna start on April the 6th and from, 11, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. All right, and just want to have a quick reminder that there is no Kingdom Institute this week, amen? Because it's spring break, yay! 
My mom reminded me, she was like, we used to call it cleanup week. So wherever you are on that, that's, that's what's happening. So there's no Mega Monday going on tomorrow because we are recognizing spring break. However, the Deliverance 101 class will be in session on Wednesday, okay? So for those of you that signed up for the Deliverance one-on-one, -on -one, I'm sorry, 101 class with Prophet Apostle Joanne Withers, it will be conducted on that Wednesday from 7 p.m. until 9, okay? So you will still be in attendance on that night. And there still is an opportunity to register. So if you are someone that was like, man, I think I missed it, missed my moment, there still is a chance. You have until this coming Wednesday at 2 p.m. to go ahead and register and get signed up and then make sure that you are present for the class that will be taking place that very same evening. Keep in mind there is a registration fee for $50. So again, if you have any questions or you're ready to register, please make sure you see Deacon Sinesha in the back, amen? All right, and we will be having our new members luncheon. So if you're a new member, raise your hand. All of those who have joined us um, from the beginning of the year in January all up until today, please um, see us upstairs immediately following service. We'll have um, a luncheon and just go over some of the wonderful things and get you all intimately acquainted with who we are, the leaders, our apostles, and just engage you with our ministry. And if you are in need of any prayer, please, again, following service, you can just come up to the altar and we will be here to greet you and pray with you. Amen? Amen. All right. And now I'll hand it over to our prophet. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Um, we can be, uh, we're ready to be dismissed. Uh, you can stand. If you are a visitor and you still have your visitor cards, we um, please, th there's a basket. Where is the? Here you go. Um, please make sure we, we get that to our gatekeepers. Um, and I just want to highlight Sister Christy, raise your hand. So Christy is the one who said I, she wanted to host a movie night for the kids here on, on Friday, March 29th. And she said, I want to make sure that the kids have a, parents have a night off, kids have a, a, a night in. So from 6 to 10 this Friday, if you want, you can drop off your kids for a fun field evening with Christy and her team this Friday night, um, Good Friday from 6 to 10 p.m. If you want to do that, make sure you see Sister Christy. And RSVP, today is the last day. There she is right there. RSVP with her today, and if you are coming to the marriage game night, RSVP with, with her today. Today is the last day, so we can have all of the counts together. All right. All right. Well, God bless you. Father, we thank you right now for your word. We thank you for our time together. We thank you that we are here in the sanctuary with you.